Whew. Good morning, everybody. It's a cold, cold morning. It's 20 degrees out right now, Fahrenheit. We're down on a, or actually, we're on a really nice lake. You see that? Early, early in the morning. We've got to get these floors in. The carpenter crew here, you can see they're getting set up. <clears throat> they're getting ready to deck this thing over, so we got to get the floors in today, get a finish on them. And then they can have at it. We don't have to worry about doing it after they get it built. So, first truck's here. We've got to use a conveyor truck. Get a little bit better breach on it. And we got two other trucks coming right after, so we're gonna get after it right now and get this thing in. Hey guys, Mike here with everything about concrete. Thanks for watching my video, thanks for tuning in. If you like this type of video, if you like concrete videos, please hit the like button. But also leave me a comment, let me know where you're from, where you're watching the video from. If you get below freezing temperatures like we do, you know, do people pour in temperatures this cold like we do? I don't see too many of these uh, on YouTube at all. Uh, it's about 25 degrees, it's really, really cold this morning. The key with, you know, one of the keys with pouring concrete out in the cold like this is you got to keep that sub base. This happens to be all crushed rock under here, then they put styrofoam over it. But you got to keep that sub base from freezing before you get here and pour the concrete on it. Definitely don't want to pour on anything frozen. And then, you know, what's your plan afterwards for covering the concrete? You can't just let the concrete freeze. So these guys that we pour for, the guys that do the foundations, um, they own, own a bunch of concrete blankets. So they usually have the sub base covered up with the blankets beforehand, and then they'll come in and either we'll cover the floor afterwards or they'll send some guys back to cover the concrete floor afterwards and then keep those you got to keep those blankets from blowing off for you know two three four days even a week sometimes to let the concrete cure up because if you don't if you just let the concrete freeze then typically what will happen we've seen it quite a few times over the years is the top eighth inch of concrete will peel right off it'll just flake right off and you'll be left as well as the concrete ends up being a lot weaker than it should. But then you'll be left with uh, just a bunch of <laughs> aggregate showing, you know, concrete with a bunch of aggregate showing, and you got to do something to fix that. So this concrete is actually pretty warm today. I mean, they're using hot water. The, the water temperature is about 130 degrees, which means after they batch it all out, get it in the concrete truck, and he gets everything all mixed up, the concrete temperature ends up around 68 to 70 degrees. So when you're pouring, you know, out in temperatures that are really, really cold, you can actually see the, the concrete steams a little bit. It feels really warm on your boots too. We're using MBW Screed Demon today to, to power screed this stuff. And that, again, that also makes it easier to screed. Now you can kind of see the steam there rolling. But that also makes it easier to screed in really cold temperatures because, you know, you're not having to grab a metal screed that's that's ice cold. I don't know about you, but the cold go, coldness goes right through my gloves and freeze my fingers. My, my fingers will freeze anyway. Just, I don't know, from doing this outside so long, over 40 years, all these winters, I just... I can only take a few minutes of freezing cold weather before I start shivering. I've got a bunch of layers on. Actually, those pants, that's me right there holding the Vibra Screed, but those pants I have on are insulated, and those work really, really good. I'll, I'll find out what brand that is and leave a link for them down in the description. But then I also have a t-shirt on, an insulated shirt, and two sweatshirts. So I'm trying to keep my body warm that way. But the gloves, I mean, you can't really wear very thick gloves doing concrete because it's hard to hold the tools especially your mag float if if you're magging some edges you got to have you know pretty nice fitting gloves to do that you can see how nice that screeds look how smooth that is it just vibrates a really nice paste up to the surface if you know what you're doing and you got a good raker it gets it really nice and flat and then what it also does is it makes it easy to bull float i mean Look how nice and flat and smooth that bowl floats. It's just like, I, I call it, it's kind of like butter. It leaves you a really nice surface. So this this basement floor here, we're gonna have to power trial today. We'll get it really smooth. And then the second floor you're gonna see, we're doing two right here, is, is just like a crawl space. So we'll just leave that bowl floated and they're gonna 
end up decking that over and it'll just be a crawl space for storage but this is at like a like a kids camp for summer like a summer camp so they're adding on to this big barn to do you know whatever they're gonna do down the road we're actually right on a lake I don't know if I got a shot of the lake or not but we're on a nice little lake and the summer camps here in Maine they usually last for about three months in the summer June July August so there's quite a few of them here because we have so many lakes here in Maine. There's a lot of these kids camps. What we're doing right now, Luke and I are just hand screening the wet pad for the middle. There's a big deep, like, we call it a haunch. I know some of you guys call it a grade beam, but there's a thicker area right in the middle where they'll put some lolly columns right down this thing. And we just... We just like hand screeding that just to make sure that it's perfectly flat right there according to according to the laser that we use to set those wet pads. And then we can use you can see how we use those pads to to screed off from. I don't know, I've I've seen some guys use these screeds like this, these power screeds without any pads at all. They'll just screed right over the concrete. Um I have no clue how they're keeping the floors level that way. I mean, I just I just can't figure that one out. But uh, everybody's got their own methods, I guess. We're using the pads. You know, there's a chalk line we snapped on the concrete walls using a laser. So we know that line is level. And then we shoot the pads in the middle with the wet pads using the laser. So we know that's level. And then we can screed right off those. So... We like to get our floors as level as possible. I mean, that's that's the whole, kind of one of the basic reasons to hire somebody to do your concrete floors is you want it nice and level if it's, if it's expected to be that way. And nice and smooth after you power trial it, I guess. The conveyor truck also came in really handy on this job. It, uh, there was, the access was a little bit limited because of just the slope of the land so this thing was about 60 feet long and that conveyor will reach about 40 so we, we were able to get him around the corner a little bit just to reach the end and then up above where the concrete truck is now there was pretty good access we didn't really have to worry about that once we got up there a little bit closer so the conveyor it cost us about 250 bucks to get that truck there versus getting a pump there for between twelve hundred and fifteen hundred dollars just to get a pump there so we just opted for the conveyor truck instead this is the second truck now we got three trucks coming today it was around 27 28 yards if I remember right and the conveyor will hold nine and a half so we had them fill that conveyor truck right up and then split the rest on the other two going right over the wall like this it isn't too bad it's pretty easy and then here's our little shoot trick so we'll once we get up right close to the wall instead of drop picking the shoot up and having the concrete drop a long distance we can just flip that shoot around rehook it it's pretty safe it won't come off there if the shoot if the shoots tight enough it won't come off those wings on the end and then you can just kind of redirect the concrete without it dropping too much and splattering all over the place for a lot of our pores like this we're just three guys, just me and Darren and Luke. And then if you've watched a few of my other videos, a lot of times we'll have another guy or two come in to help us on some bigger ones. And that just, you know, those guys work for themselves, but we kind of network together on jobs. So, you know, if we need a hand for an hour or two getting something poured, one of those guys or both of them will come help us. And then if they need a hand doing something, we'll jump in and, We'll go help them whenever we can. So it just works out good that way to have a bunch of people that you can work with. And, you know, you're not really competing with for jobs. It's just all, everybody helping each other to get jobs done. We would actually, if we could find the right person, we'd hire another person just to work full time for us. Um... So I don't know. I mean, if you guys know anybody out there, just let me know in the comments. If you're looking for work, you want to move to Maine, you want to do concrete work like we do. I mean, 
there could be an opportunity down the road for someone. Definitely, we definitely want someone that's hard working, that's willing to learn the trade and and do the work every day. It's it's not really like it is hard work, but once you learn it, it's not too bad, especially when you work together as a team. All right. <sighs> that one's in my fingers are still froze. Trying to get them unthawed. Just you know, it's below freezing. You got these gloves on that aren't very insulated. Kind of need thin gloves to work in, but makes it tough. We're gonna get this second truck dumped out. It's pretty hot. We don't have to finish this floor. This is just a bullfo finish, so this is kind of a bonus. Now, in case some of you guys are wondering, there's no wire in this, there's no rebar in this. We always use fiber mesh in the concrete. We typically use a little bit higher uh, PSI concrete for our floors, like a 3500 and sometimes even a 4000, where most guys will just use a 3000 PSI concrete, and that's, that's perfectly fine too. That's plenty strong enough for a concrete floor like this, a residential one. Um, but inside a foundation like this, inside a concrete wall, the concrete's not going to go anywhere and the wire and the rebar don't typically make it like a stronger concrete they just help hold it together if it does crack so the one thing that's going to make the concrete crack the most is if your sub base isn't compacted correctly you know something might settle the next thing is you know pouring your concrete too wet and weakening it so what we do in that case is we use a like a mid-range water reducer or even sometimes a high-range water reducer like a super plasticizer and that allows you to pour a really really loose slump without adding water so um, high water cement ratios will cause a lot of shrinkage cracking and using the, the mid-range or the high-range water reducers really help keep the, the water cement ratios low so you got really high strength concrete that uh, doesn't typically shrink a lot so it won't crack and then the last thing we do is we saw cut contraction joints in all our floors, so we'll saw cut joints. And if the floor does want to crack, it'll crack, you know, 99% of the time it'll crack in that saw joint. So you can't even see the crack anyway. But as far as wire and rebar and stuff like that and something like this, uh, not really necessary. I know a lot of you guys, it's pretty normal practice to do that. Tie tie a two foot mat of rebar in here or throw the wire mesh in there and you know we've been we've been doing it this way for years and years and years using I don't know how long ago fiber mesh came out but a long long time ago and you know when it first came out it was pretty rigid so the fibers would stick all up everywhere and you'd see them after, even after you're done power trial and the, the floors would look like hairy fibers nowadays they have what's called a microfiber mesh. So the, the microfibers are barely noticeable in there. You can't even see them. Like right now when you're pouring, you can't even see them. Um, if, you, if you take a hose, like if you took a, a shovel full of concrete out, threw it on the dirt, took a hose to it, then you could start seeing some of the fibers as you rinse the, the concrete paste away from the stone and, and the sand. But anyway, we've had really good luck with just using fiber mesh. Making sure that the guys that do the grading, you know, they grade their floors right, number one. Which not all of them do, but you grade the floor right, compact it with a good compactor, make sure it's got good compaction. And if the floor doesn't settle, then the only other really way it's going to crack is if it shrinks, usually. and Or heaves, I guess, if it freezes, but... This is going to be heat all heated, so this won't this won't freeze. But if it shrinks, you know more than normal, you'll you'll get a crack somewhere, and sometimes that happens. But very rarely on these floors that we do do we have any trouble with cracks. Now we're on to the third truck here, Chris. Chris has been driving concrete trucks for a long, long time. 
Well, actually, most of the most of all the drivers we have have been doing that. There's not too many new guys around, and these guys got five brand new concrete trucks. This is one of them. They got even though I don't have a very good shot of it in the picture, but they got five of these new trucks, and they still have a couple of them just sitting in the yard waiting for drivers. <laughs> they can't even find drivers to drive them. The width on this one, we got real lucky on the width of this one. But the the power screed, that's a 12 foot board on that, and you can see it just fit inside this one. It was about 12 foot eight on the inside dimensions, so a little bit lucky there on that. Otherwise, we'd be screeding it by hand. That mix is a pretty nice mix too. The aggregate, the cement, everything that makes a really nice paste gives you for a really nice smooth bullfold finish. And like I said earlier, when you double that up by using a, a vibrating screed like this, it makes the bull float finish even look nicer. The guys, the builders here have already started today. They're starting to put that first plate down. You can kind of see that on the top of the concrete wall on the right. And, you know, there were, uh, somehow they could attach this new building to that old building. And that old building sitting on those posts is really, really out of level. So... They got their work cut out for them there, but they were going to deck this over. Probably they were thinking about decking it over today, but I think they're going to wait and let this stuff set up just for a little bit before they deck it over. This is probably one of the most awkward things about the Vibrascreed is just trying to get it out of the foundation when the board is still on it. Usually takes at least a couple guys, one on the inside, one on the outside. The board just is held on by two bolts to it. That com actually comes off pretty easy, but, you know, us concrete guys, we're always in a hurry, so we just try to throw it out there. Now Luke's going to finish this up. He's going to screed the rest of this by hand. I'll end up jumping out and get out of his way, but this is how we usually finish up most floors in any type of foundation when we're down inside is we'll grab a little bit shorter board screed our way out into a corner and then we got to jump out the corner pull the ladder out fill in the little holes the left by the ladder and we can get out of this thing but Luke's gonna show you right here just how we do that Luke's been with he's been with me for a long long time it's so it's well over 20 years now and then Darren, the other guy that was with me, he's been with me, I don't know, 28 years or so, somewhere around there. So both these guys have been doing concrete for a really, really long time. And no, they're not brothers. <laughs> did you did you think they were brothers earlier in the video? Let me know in the comments. But they're not. They're just good friends. So once Luke gets to a point where he can't use the screed anymore and he's all done using the bull float, last thing to do is just kind of mag your way out best you can. And then smooth that out and then get yourself up out of there pull the ladder out and then about the last thing you can do is just kind of just kind of vibrate your little ladder mark or any little foot marks left out with the screen all right got that in <laughs> that, uh, that second truck was hot he was heating up fast Third truck felt really good, didn't have any trouble putting him in. Uh, let's go check. Let's go check that first one. See yeah, how it's set up on It's 9.45, I don't know, we probably got Crete around 7.15, 7.30. Just check and see. Oh yeah. That's firming up really good for as cold as it is. 
that's really firm. So the other guys will be getting on that with the power trial here probably probably in a half hour.